pause and we're gonna go to the next video in just a moment. And it is about communication. Sometimes people feel uncomfortable but they can't unhear something once they've heard it. So I don't listen to anyone that says, Alex, you can't reach people, you're wasting your time. Because it feels good to break people's little bubble and to give them a piece of information that I know, I know guaranteed, they're gonna remember the conversation as the years go on. So this is why I do what I do. Now, a few days ago, I'm walking by 28th and Burnside where the Starbucks is. There's three, three cop cars lined up there. One of the cop car in the middle, he had his trunk open slightly. And so I shut it for him out of the goodness of my heart. And I'm thinking, hmm, as an investigator, where might three police officers be? Let's see, bar, restaurant, Starbucks. You know, I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and, and guess the cops are in Starbucks. Well, they're in Starbucks. And of course, I let them know that I shut the door, gave them some information on the show, some things that we talk about, and let them know that, you know, I'm kind of known as an anti-police state guy, but I still have the morality to shut their trunk and they should recognize it. And they can pay me back by coming down to the Portland Preparedness Center and being a customer. We're checking out the show, something like that. Letting them know, hey, there are people in the community that will do the right thing. Now, did they thank me? They were a little bit, they were so uncomfortable. Two of the cops, or rookie cops, were looking down at the ground. It was the older black cop that was listening to every word that was coming out of my mouth when I started going into Top Off 4 and these things going on with the FBI and Homeland Security. But I bid farewell and um, waved and took, the, took off. But um, to the other two cops, everything I was saying was a joke. To the other cop, he was listening but they are not used to being in, uh, approached by a lot of people in Portland, bringing up certain things. So when I do it, it's like a big surprise. Like there's a human talking to me. I don't know what to do. This is not a random traffic stop. They're walking up and they're stopping. They're talking to me. And they're not used to it being reversed on them. Uh, people aren't, aren't used to this. Um, a lot of officers aren't used to this. Now, there's a lot of people, a lot of activists in this town, and that's a good thing. But a lot of officers, when I come up to them, they've never heard about such things. All right, we have phone calls. All right, we'll take those phone calls and then we'll move on with uh, the news. We have a lot to get through tonight. Come on. Hello, you're on the air. Uh, yes. Um, I, I heard something last night on the news. Uh, well, it was barely this morning when I woke up, and I'm not I'm understanding it clearly, about them confiscating guns. They, they were like, a, um, they were um, uh, paying $50 for guns. Yeah, this is a program that's been implemented nationwide for a number of years. It's nothing new. Um, and uh, we also saw how the government responded during Hurricane Katrina. Uh -huh. So that event five years ago should be a great wake-up call to everybody. In a disaster, this is what the government intends on doing in the disaster zones, collecting well, in, guns. In, in Katrina, they sent Blackwater down there to confiscate yes, they did. guns, right? That, yes, they did. And the mainstream media even showed that footage multiple times. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it going, is the media warning people that this is going on? Or are they kind of desensitizing people by showing the imagery over and over and over again? You know that very famous clip of the elderly woman that was taken down? Right. Yeah. So um, you're reading something that was uh, uh, out of the local news or national news? Uh, it was, I think it was on the local news, and they were talking about the uh, about 50 people or so had turned in their guns last night mm -hmm. for $50 a piece. Mm -hmm. They were paying for them. Yeah. Well, so yeah. I know that this is just another plank that they're laying before they start yeah. uh, calling for people's guns. They, they haven't, like like started demanding that people turn in their guns yet. Right, exactly, and times are hard economically, uh, and uh, so that's a way that they are uh, capitalizing upon that. You also have people that are uh, buying gold back from people. I mentioned this um, last week on the show at Lloyd Center. Uh, yeah. The guy was handing out little baggies. Gold buyers at the mall, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, he's, he's doing business, and business for him must be good. All right, well, thank you for the information. Thank you, thank you for watching, thank you for calling in. Okay, let's cover a couple pieces of news. We'll start with some local news, and then we'll cover some other things. Again, natural disasters on the rise uh, on our planet over the course of the last few years, especially the last year. But here locally, a rare tornado touches down uh, in a small Oregon town. A rare tornado hit Almsville, Oregon at lunchtime on Tuesday, damaging and destroying half a dozen buildings. But initial reports say there were no injuries from the Fluke Twister. A plumbing business directly across the street from City Hall was completely demolished. Tornadoes are highly unusual in Western Oregon. And the next report, this comes from the Associated Press. 2010's World Gone Wild, Quakes, 
floods, blizzards. This was the year the Earth struck back. Earthquakes, heat waves, floods, volcanoes, super typhoons, blizzards, landslides, and droughts killed at least a quarter million people in 2010, the deadliest year in more than a generation. More people were killed worldwide by natural disasters this year than have been killed in terrorist attacks in the past 40 years combined. According to the U.S. Emergency Management Agency, federal, FEMA, quote, it just seemed like it was back to back and it came in waves. The term 100-year event really has lost its meaning this year. And we have ourselves to blame most of the time, scientists and disaster experts say. Even though many catastrophes have the ring of random chance, the hand of man made this a particularly deadly, costly, and extreme and weird year from everything from wild weather to earthquakes. Poor construction and development practices conspire to make earthquakes more deadly than they need to be. More people live in poverty in vulnerable buildings in crowded cities. That means that when the ground shakes, the river breaches or the tropical cyclone hits, more people die. In the next headline, city block collapses in Astoria. A vacant city block in downtown Astoria has collapsed after heavy weekend rain. No injuries were reported. The Daily Astorian reports that city manager Paul... Um, Beno believes that the collapse may be related to a depression in the concrete where rainwater pooled. And in the next headline here, a couple very important headlines on the local level. Mystery of nasty smelling water in Portland, Oregon. Mothball chemical was in water, city officials now say. Take a good long drink, Northeast Portland. The city says it solved the nasty problem that has been plaguing some people near Northeast Gleason and Northeast Holiday Streets. That's where the store is located at 72nd. The city began receiving complaints recently about some foul-smelling water coming from the taps in an area of Northeast Portland. People say the water smelled like mothballs. Turned out their stories were not full of holes. The city says after examining samples, the water contained a chemical called naphthalene. Naphthalene. That is the pugnant primary ingredient found in mothballs. So how did the mothballs get in the water supply? Nopholine comes from coal tar. And coal tar was once the standard coating for the water mains across the U.S. until the 1970s. So the city believes the distasteful water came from a 1,000-foot section of pipe where the lining was affecting the odor and taste of the water. Of course, they say that the doses are very low, no effects are going to be, no negative health effects are likely to come about from this, but don't they say that every single time? And the big problem with our water supply, of course, is the pipes. It's not the source, Bull Run. It's also the chlorine and the ammonia that's put in the water, changing its molecular structure, or as some say, the God force of water, water which is consciousness, all the more reason to A, filter your water, and be bless your water and expose it to sunlight because water is a carrier of information, consciousness information. And it goes through a severe traumatic phase. And you can think of a, a negative emotions, just fear, or some sort of trauma, pain um, of some type. That energy being embodied within the water that goes through such a violent process of going from point A to point B, and then of course being blasted with chemicals the water really doesn't need. So all of this we have to keep in mind when we drink water. Now in the next headline, we're gonna talk a little bit about power rates going up. Rates set the jump for Pacific Power and PGE customers. Coming up on the 1st of January, come New Year's, better strip the lights off the house and the Christmas trees as soon as possible. Customers of Pacific Power will see their rates spike 14.5%. Again, that's 14.5% in January. On the first, that is. The increase comes in a one-two punch. An 8.4% general rate increase state utility regulators approved on Friday. And a 6.1% increase for increased power costs. They are expected to approve December 28th. Both take effect on the first. Meanwhile, PGE, the rates are going up 3.9%. A few mandatory cost adjustments are in the works. That's going to bump that overall increase to 4.2%. At least those are the numbers that they're giving us at this time. 
In the next report, we're going to cover a couple of new headlines with the TSA. Boy not searched by TSA because you don't have boobs, agent allegedly said. Adrian Durso, a resident of California, was selected for an enhanced pat-down after walking through a metal detector at Albuquerque International Sunport Airport. Her 17-year-old son had to watch the experience. After watching his mother receive an enhanced pat-down by the TSA, the 17-year-old asked why he wasn't searched, and it was told by the TSA agent it's because you don't have boobs. And she had to go through the whole process of showing her prosthetic breast uh, because she is a survivor of breast cancer in the next report. Ex-TSA worker faces child porn charges. Andrew Shever, 33, was arraigned in the uh, Lao District Court on two counts of possession of child porn. He was ordered, held on 15,000 cash bail with the conditions that he had no contact with children under the age of 18. And it goes on, according to investigators on the 8th of October, Massachusetts State Police detectives conducted an investigation into the use of file sharing programs for the possession and distribution of child porn. During the investigation, investigators observed a computer on the network which was sharing suspected child porn files. Investigators were able to connect to the host server, the host computer, and view multiple files that were being made available to share, made available to share by this ex-TSA worker. Um, so much of it is a war on the feminine. So much of what's going on with the TSA should be a wake-up call to so many people that have been in denial for so long that we're not turning into a police state, that, that this is not organized, that there's no conspiracy to violate our comfort zone. This should be a massive wake-up call, wake call to the whole planet, not just uh, people within America, because they're phasing these things in in Europe. Uh, and, of course, the Netherlands are talking about a mobile body scanner. And so all of this is, of course, coming to the forefront for people to see it, for people to see exactly what they need to change, what they don't want to be a part of, what they're not going to accept most of all. And if it comes down to not flying, maybe you might want to make that choice. It comes down to you don't know where the images are going. We do know they're keeping the images of people's naked body. We don't know really where it's going, but we know that it's going on. And that's enough to know that this is something that's extremely nasty, uh, that's being okay to the top levels of the federal government. That includes the decisions Obama is making, just like Bush passed a number of executive orders that helped really build up the current police state. So all of this should be a great wake-up call to those that think great progress has changed and, and things like that are coming, equality, uh, the illusion of, of racial equality within this country or that the government's becoming more lovely uh, or loving of, of different minority groups uh, by allowing someone that has a shade of a darker tone of skin uh, to run for office within the United States just completely shatters that fallacy. Um, as well as many other things that we've talked about over the years. 2011 is going to be a big, big year. I'm glad we made it this far. I'm glad we're going to have show 300 coming up in uh, just a little bit. But um, basically 20 more shows from now, about uh, that looks like five more months from now, we'll probably do another live show here uh, at PCM. We'll allow people to come for a live studio showing of the 300 show. All that's positive, despite all this negative news, this massive influx of information, this, this massive birth, like a mother giving birth, the consciousness, this great birth of all these people asking questions. And, and those that don't fully know what's going on or, or why we're so passionate, they think we're doom and gloomers. They think that we're, we're foreseeing and prophesizing the end of the world when we're highlighting these things that should not be going on within our own society because we have very large hearts. We have emotion. We're still human. We're not robots yet. We're not slaves. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not completely at that level of consciousness to where we're going to allow ourselves to be pushed into the meat grinder. But because we care so much about the others, because we know, we know, many of you know, we take care of ourselves by taking care of others. That's why we bring up these stories. To get people to question, do you really want to walk through that scanner? Do you really want to go along to get along? Do you really want to put that ballot in the box and vote for this candidate that has links to Blackwater and links to Monsanto and links, very close links to the people that pulled the strings of the previous president? Information is powerful. If it wasn't powerful, they wouldn't be using the whole WikiLeaks thing 
uh, to shut down the web. And that's where they want to take it. Problem, reaction, solution. And we have another phone call.